folks. In this video, we're going to finish up this workbench. I'm going to warn you, it's a little bit long because uh, there's a lot of moves. Uh, a lot of things happen to put one of these together, so uh, try to stick with me if you can. But uh, the base is going to be um, Douglas fir, all mortise and tannin, and uh, glue and oak pegs holding it together. So um, let's just get busy. Stick with me. All right, all our leg and stretcher material is cut down. And uh, we'll let that sit probably, I guess, about a week or so. That came out of the lows. It was, in it was inside, so it wasn't like it was sitting in a lumber yard. So it's not going to be as wet as some of it. All right, that takes care of the first part of the first part. We got one side flattened and one side squared to it, so you can see. And that's about as good as I can make it. And again, when it comes to making this stuff, the truer you can get it, the easier your glue up's gonna be. So uh, next, we're gonna run it through the surface planer and uh, get them all the same thickness. There's all our leg pieces finished. You can see we're nice and flush on top. And just laying on the bench, you can see they're pretty true. Like I say, the closer you can get that, the better off you are. All right, so I was going through my pieces here and uh, marking them. You can mark them any way you see fit, just as long as uh, keep them uh, in order and I just put a triangle and I know that all these are C pieces and as long as the triangle meets up then that's good B's A's okay time to get these legs ready to glue up I think I already showed you but I've got them marked so I don't get them turned around and I'm gonna use biscuits in here three of them at each joint to help hold everything nice and flush. So I got six, 18, and 30. So hopefully that won't get in the way of any of my mortises or anything like that. So I'm gonna set up the uh, biscuit joiner and start putting some holes in there. And we'll do that for about 80, 90 more times and we'll be ready for some glue. All right, that's one down. And I don't know if I mentioned uh, making these, this base out of uh, dug fur, but just give you a little instance how this goes. This obviously is gonna get glued into this slot. And then when these, boards are rolled together. There you go. Nice and flush. Right, the uh, first one glued up pretty good. Um, I'm using a roller this time, a foam roller. And obviously my pieces aren't as large, but um, I think I can put glue on all of it, then, then put it together and then, then clamp it. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. Nice tight though.
you go. So I'm gonna clean this up and uh, take the two that are glued together, put them into larger clamps, move on to the next two. All right, let me show you real quick what I'm doing. It seems to be working out okay for me. And that is I'm using these smaller clamps to squeeze everything together, give me a chance to wipe the excess glue off. And once I get the board cleaned, I move it over to these larger clamps and cinch them in place. And so these can sit right here like that until I get the next piece glued up, cleaned up, and then I'll open them up a little bit, add that leg, and uh, then the final leg. Right, let me show you how I got this clamped up. And even, even now it's still squeezing out. But I guess this is the part where I say you can never have too many clamps, right? Okay, let me show you what we got going on here. I pulled the uh, legs out of the clamps and cut them to length on the table saw. And then I set them up uh, on the floor the way I like to see them on the bench. Mark the top so I don't get them confused. And then I'm cutting a tendon, tenon, um, on the top of each one. And uh, I'm gonna use the table saw to do that. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. Table saw and the uh, band saw. shoulder cut all the way around it and we'll move to the Nice clean tenon. It's a little easier for me to just clamp them all together, do them all at once. Okay, I got these legs setting the way they'll be setting on the uh, bench when they're installed. So you see all my arrows are pointing to the front. Left rear, right rear, right front, left front. And I've gone around and I've put an X, kind of hard to see, everywhere a stretcher goes. So I got one at the top and the bottom on this, because this is going to be the side. Got it marked down here at the bottom for the bottom stretcher. Top and bottom here and the bottom there. And hopefully that is enough uh, to keep me from getting it messed up. So I'm um, gonna set them on the bench now. We're gonna lay out for the um, mortises and set the drill press up and get started on that. All of them are set. There's a center line for our bore. We're gonna go two inches into this post. Um, and then our stretchers will have a half inch shoulder on them. So I'm gonna set up the drill press and uh, Get started on that. Let me show you how I'm marking these. clean up the mortises. 
The school combination square got set at an inch and a quarter. And it's obviously the same for all of them. And I'll mark down this one side of the mortise. I'll take this piece of three quarter because my tenons are gonna be three quarters. I'll make my tenons the same size as this board. You'll see on the back side. I just line that up. Mark the back side. Then all the mortises are the same thickness. Then obviously, get busy with your chisels. If you're a stranger to chisels, you won't be after this. And then as I am cleaning these mortises, make sure that we can see this. I keep this piece of stock handy and I've got it marked at uh, two and a quarter inches is what my um, tenon depth is. So as I'm mortising this and I'm getting it to what I think is close, you see, I have something to gauge it with. So when I go to glue this up, I know that's gonna fit. And then to make sure that I've got it so it'll go in square, push that over to the end, set it to my square, and you can see my joint's tight there. And if I flip it around this way, I'm on my two inch mark. And we're square and we're tight. Keep your whetstone handy because you're gonna have to sharpen up your chisels. So these three are done. I've got one more mortise to do on the uh, the other leg. It's for the bottom stretchers. So I might this thing might stand on its own tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, I got the place cleaned up, as you can see. Now I can work. So this is our side, and I want this to finish it. 23 and a quarter which is here and then we're gonna have a tenon on each end which is right at two inches so that's the total length of our stretcher so I'm gonna set the saw up with the ankra and uh, cut all four of these the same I've already squared one end see how nice and pretty that is Okay, back at you. We got uh, our first tenon cut, and I'm gonna show you the process. Pretty decent. So we're gonna go from this to this to this. And all of them are going to be exactly the same. I'm going to show you how we accomplish that. The thickness of the tenon, we, I just eased up on. Uh, marked the edge of the board where my tenon is supposed to be. And eased up on it, used some calipers until um, my tenon matched the piece that I was using as my, uh, my example when I was morsing these out. Then we have this gauge set up so we can bump that stop. That will cut exactly there, right around, right? Flip it. 
this tenon will be exactly the same length as that tenon. And I could, um, I could just cut the shoulder on all these and then put a dado blade in, but I've been just, I've been just chipping them out because um, it's only four pieces. up a little bit uh, if it's too tight or whatever that's pretty easy with a good sharp chisel so we're just going to do that for the rest of the sides and uh, we'll set it into the bandsaw and cut the shoulders on the top and the bottom As you can see both our tenons are nibbled out so next we're going to cut these shoulders off So once we get all these cut, then I'll remove the fence and I'll come back and nip the ends of this off. And it'll be ready for the, uh, for the legs. Here we go. And that thing slid together like a glove. And you can see, we throw some clamps on here. That's going to finish up nice, so I'm going to put that one together, make sure everything fits, and uh, put a clamp on it to hold it there, and then we'll get started on the stretchers to go from left to right. Pretty good for no clamps. Joints are way acceptable. Once I glue and clamp that, When all these ed uh, edges are eased, you can see what it looks like. Just chamfer here, chamfer the outside corner, and then an eighth inch round over, and all the rest of it. Just cleans it up a bit. Okay, our next project is to drill the holes for the draw bores. So there's where our tenon goes in. And so I've got them laid off. Again, you want to triple, quadruple, uh, check your measurements because it would be horrible to mess something up at this point. You've got so much time wrapped up into this thing. So um, I have a stand to help hold the post. And I got the travel on my drill as well as a fence. So I'm gonna finish out these couple of legs and then I'll show them to you and then we'll move on to marking and drilling for the tenants because this is what we're gonna end up with is a uh, draw bore.
So when we beat the peg in there, it'll help pull the stretchers tight to the post. All right, that gets uh, all the holes for the stretchers. You see it nice slide, nice tight fit. Okay, all our drilling is done, except for the stretchers. You see, it'd be difficult to get a dowel down through there because there's no hole in the stretcher. So what we're gonna do is take the same bit we use to drill these, and we're gonna drop it in there, and we're gonna spin it around a couple times. And you probably can't see it, but there's a very small little dot there from the point on this Faulkner bit. We're gonna use that to line up our drill bit, and we're gonna drill the hole about a sixteenth of an inch further to the shoulder than the mark. So when we draw these pegs in there, it will pull that stretcher tight to the post. They're good now. And I've, like I said, I clamped this thing up good and tight and uh, pretty satisfied with well, everything fits. Checked it for square, it's right on. So let's, uh, Let's get these things marked and get a hole drilled. So, there you go. Spot on. I don't know of any other way to mark that more accurately. And like I say, as we drill these, we'll drill them offset just a little bit. And, uh, that would draw these stretchers tied up to the post the way we want. bunch more of that. All right, we got 30% battery. I think we can do this. We're going to try to glue this thing up, uh, put the pegs in without having a disaster. So let's rock and roll. I think I got everything set up. Here we go. Worked pretty clean, so let's check this sucker for square. Forty one. 
looks like a 32nd of an inch, which is exactly what the other one was. One and a 32. And so you don't even need to put it in clamp, just let it dry now. Clamps ain't gonna do nothing for that. It's where it's gonna be. So I'm gonna set a cedar shake shingle under here. Like so. And uh, cut these pegs off. And that's it for today. So, what a difference a day makes, huh? Oh, look. Cold and rainy, yesterday was sunny and beautiful. So, uh, yesterday, uh, you've probably seen, I took the hammer and beat this, beat a dent into my leg. So, I'm gonna try something that I've never tried before. Let me get this down a little closer. So you can see the dent. So I got a hot iron here. I've seen this done. Just wet that piece of wood a little bit. Dampen my rag. See what happens. I'll be a son of a gun. Oh, that's amazing. Well, that, my friends, is incredible. A little bit of sandpaper, that thing's history. I've never done that before, so if you ever wondered, it works. And this thing uh, clamped up, the stretcher's in, and it's starting to look like a bench bottom. I checked it for square and uh, consistency as far as the width goes and it it just clamps up exactly perfect so I guess the moral of the story is the more accurate you are with all your pieces the easier it's going to be to glue this thing up and the more accurate uh, finished product you're going to have so again I say it again Slow down, enjoy the process. You probably won't build but one of these in your life. Okay, so I got the uh, pegs cut off, sanded flush, looking pretty sharp. We're gonna get into some more nerve wracking stuff. I have the bench top over here on my assembly table, turned upside down. And this is the end for the front vise. I'm gonna leave 10 and a half inches there. I got some blocks bolted to the front, I mean clamped to the front, so those legs become flush because it will eventually at some point be dog holes uh, in it. And I cut this short, it'll be with about a three quarter inch overhang on the front because I just didn't want to see it flush there. 
So next I'm gonna take a pencil and draw each one of these tenons onto the top. And then comes the arduous task of removing that wood and not destroying the tabletop. Oh. Well, now comes the funnest part so far. <laughs> Putting holes in that hard maple top for these tenons to fit in. So, that's what they look like. And I'm gonna show you real quick how I set up to do that. So first I'm gonna take this hole that I marked from the, uh, put you over here. This mark that I put when I had the base on up, upside down, I'm just gonna square it up. tell you if you decide to chisel this out you'll get good at, you'll get good with your chisel before you're done with this all right got you back the battery went beep 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 and that means that's the end of that so I'm gonna use a quarter inch paddle bit I'm gonna mark it close to that corner right going past as I can. I'm gonna take a scratch off, put some holes. Mark it from corner to corner. Don't brush that on the floor. Keep it up here until it's good and cool. You don't want to catch a shop on fire drilling a hole. Next, big old fastener bit. I'm going to set that point right in that hole. So that's what our hole looks like after we've got it drilled out. And I use, I keep a little pocket square handy with me. Make sure that um, as I'm mortising this that I stay deep enough on the corners and that, uh, that all my sides stay straight. Turn the music up and then enjoy yourself a little bit. I like to stay in front of my chisel because it's easier for me to judge whether or not it's
So there you go, there's one corner. And you just check yourself as you go. It's easier to clean it up now. You see how that's, there's a little bit of a crack in there, so I need to clean that bottom off some. But you get the gist of it. It's gonna take a while, and your arm's gonna get a um, good workout. Okay, that's our finish uh, mortise. And uh, I just take a sanding block, ease the edges so uh, you know, make it a little easier putting together, hopefully. But if you do if 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 you do this this way, it's gonna take you a few hours. But it's good exercise. Arms gonna get tired. It's gonna get strong. And uh, as you can see, if you look closely. There's four holes in that top. And there's four holes on this base. So that means it's time to turn that thing upside down and see if it fits. I ain't so sure I wanna do that. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> okay, we're about ready to join these two for good, but we wanna put some uh, old linseed oil on here first so we are grace with lisa's presence tell everybody <laughs> hello <Yep. laughs> she's gonna glue she's gonna glue up the tenons i'm gonna glue up the mortises and then we're gonna flip it real quick Grandkids will be looking at that 25 years from now. Yeah. Well, she snuck off quick. But here we go. How you like that? Got the little shelf in the bottom. There's all ship lap. I think she's fake. Look. <laughs> she's real. <laughs> she's real. And she is going to help make these two pieces permanent forever. Now, when you try this peg, don't you turn your back to the camera now. Folks don't like me much, but they might like you. All right, baby, let her have it. Listen, listen, you hear it. You know the deal. Keep going. Hear that? That's it.
Told you you could drive it. <laughs> Is that in deep enough? It looks farther out than another one. Oh, you hear that? That's solid. Go right, so I set this up and do the front side. And that way when my grandkids cry, they always know Papa made this. Good morning. It's that time to show you how we uh, ended up with our bench. It's finished. I love it. Want to do another one. So let's check it out. This bench is 24 wide six foot long with a three inch top hard maple just uh i did this off camera i ship lapped some uh one by that i had laying here in the uh, shop for the base or the shelf rather and um i stained the douglas fir base which is uh i didn't i didn't do that on camera because who wants to sit around and watch somebody stain something? But I will tell you this, Douglas fir doesn't stain very well, and I know this, but initially I had planned on painting this, but after I stained it, I said, well, if it wants to look old, let's just go with it. And so I uh, took some 220 and kind of distressed it a little bit, put a couple coats of urethane on it, but, uh, I'm really happy with the results. Lisa thinks uh, it's a kitchen island, but it ain't. <laughs> it's my workbench. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, stuck through the whole, uh, I think it's ended up two videos, I'm not sure, because this, that's a lot to cram in one video. But, uh, Hope you stuck with us, because um, we sure appreciate it. If you are uh, a new subscriber, we sure thank you for that. And if you haven't, we hope you might consider subscribing. Anyway, next project. This is a new one for me. I'm gonna put these steps together. Completely new post pickets, handrail, everything. Then we're gonna break it down pre-finish it all, then we're gonna take it to the customer's house and install it. So this is gonna be a fun project too. Anyway, I gotta to get to work or I'm gonna get hollered at. So, uh, peace.